Do you look like this when you stand with your pelvis pushed forward and tucked under and your back swayed back and your head forward and your shoulders rounded? It's not exactly the best looking posture in the world, but you know what? It does look cool if you're Miles Davis and you're playing the trumpet or if you're in Billy Madison and you're peeing your pants. If peeing your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. Anyways, today we're gonna to be looking at this posture. It's called swayback posture. We're gonna explain exactly what's going on here as well as the reasons why you fail to get results. Now, if this happens to be the first video you clicked on, you're welcome. This is the best video you're gonna find. Keep watching it all the way to the end. If you're someone who's been trying and trying and trying and trying, then you're welcome in advance because this video is exactly what you need. Without further ado, let's start off by diving deep into what's going on here. Then we'll talk exercises and the real reasons that you can't get the results you want. Uh, let's jump right in. All right, so first of all, what is swayback posture? So swayback posture is named for the position of the rib cage. It sways back and kind of sinks down like this. But this isn't the cause of the posture. This position of the rib cage is actually just a reaction to what's going on down below in the pelvis. So if I shift my pelvis forward like this and tuck my butt under, what you're gonna see is that my weight shifts forward. Now the body wants to create balance with this forward shift somehow, and the way that it does it in a sway back posture is it takes this forward shift and then counteracts it with a swaying back through the rib cage. Now, of course, this equal and opposite reaction continues up into the head and the head comes forward into this very traditional forward head posture. And then because we have a sunken down sternum like this and a dipped in chest, then we see the shoulders come around the contour of the rib cage and give you that forward shoulder look as well. Now, in terms of posture, it is definitely not the most attractive. Again, pretty cool if you're trying to play trumpet, but aside from that, really not that cool. So if you like to hang out in that sway back posture because it feels cool, go ahead. But you should be able to get into a more neutral representation, and if you can't, then that might be cause for concern. So to dive a little bit deeper here, what we're looking at is we're looking at a pelvis that is pushed forward in space, but it's not a traditional anterior pelvic tilt, it's actually a posterior pelvic tilt. So the upper half of the pelvis is back relative to the lower half of the pelvis, which is pushed forward. That's why in a sway back, you have someone that actually has their butt tucked under, so it is an anteriorly shifted pelvis, but a posteriorly tilted pelvis. I know, it's kind of confusing. And this is why doing those traditional kind of exercises to do posterior pelvic tilt, just not gonna work here. You actually need to be biased towards more of an anterior pelvic tilt, but shifts yourself back in space. And what this does is it takes the femur position, the upper leg position, and it reverses it from an external rotation position that you'll see in a sway back, which just tightens this butt up and restricts your hip mobility, to more of an internally rotated position, which is a better position for producing force and standing in a more neutral, relaxed position. Now in the rib cage, we have this sunken down sternum like this and this shifted swayed back back, and then we have the rounded shoulders, which then come around just as a natural consequence of the rib cage position. So in this case, when we get this sunken back position, we have a tight six pack abdominal muscle here that comes all the way from the sternum down to the pubic bone. So in order to get this position to be a little bit better, we need to loosen up that six pack, bring that sternum back up and actually get this rib cage to shift forward a bit relative to the pelvis that's shifting back. If we can do all this, we're gonna find that the shoulders and the head actually take care of themselves, going from this swayed back position with a forward head rounded shoulder to more of a neutral position with a normal head position and neutral shoulders as well. So now the core ingredients of any exercise program for sway back are going to include something to loosen up that tight lower butt area, as well as this tense six pack abdominal area. You're gonna notice that the exercises are going to always have some component of loosening this area or this area here. Now, in addition to this, what we also have in this case is we have a little bit too much squeezing in the upper rib cage, and we have a shift of the internal fluids in the abdomen down and forward. 
So you'll often see that a swayback individual might have a little bit of a pooched belly kind of an appearance here as well. So we're also gonna need to learn how to bring in the lower and deeper abs to pull up those abdominal contents. And then we'll also have to be able to relax this lower rib cage area here as well so that we can get into a little bit better balance when it comes to upper versus lower abs. Now, last but not least, we're gonna see that we have that sunken back position here through the rib cage. And that in combination with those tense abs reduces the ability to expand the front of the rib cage. So in addition to working on loosening up those tight six pack muscles, some of these front abs and those tight glutes, we're also gonna have to get expansion forward in through the rib cage in order to restore the rib cage to its original shape. If you're getting value from this video so far, then just hand over your wallet and give me all your money. No, 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 no. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, boost it in the algorithm, share with your friends. Uh, but yeah, give me all your money too. And then keep watching the rest of the video, that's good too. Peace. So the first exercise we're gonna do here is a prone breathing exercise. And this exercise is going to help you to start to loosen up those tight six pack abdominal muscles and also to help you to expand this part of the lower front part of your rib cage. To perform this activity, you'll start in a prone position and then push down and slightly away with your elbows, forearms, and hands so that your shoulder blades wrap around your upper back. You'll allow your rib cage to move away from the ground slightly so that the back of your rib cage remains in an open position and so that the belly button sinks down towards the ground so a natural arch forms in the lower aspect of your back. From this position, you'll breathe in gently through the nose, feeling expansion in the back side of the rib cage. Then you'll exhale gently through the nose or mouth as you re-engage the forearms, hands, and elbows into the ground. You'll then repeat this for a series of breaths. And at the end of the series of breaths, you'll relax down to the starting position and repeat as needed. Now to take this to even the next level, we can elevate the lower body relative to the upper body and drive a little bit more expansion through the rib cage rather than the abdomen, which is gonna help us reverse that upper and lower abdominal imbalance as well as expand that rib cage. To perform this activity, you'll start in the hands and knees position with the lower body elevated. Then you'll drop down to elbows and forearms. And in this position, you'll rock forward slightly so that your nose moves over your fingertips. From here, you'll reach down through the ground with the elbows and forearms to move the rib cage slightly away from the ground. Then once in this position, you'll perform a series of breaths, doing gentle inhales through the nose. These should be quiet and inaudible. And then long, gentle exhales through the mouth. Between the inhale and exhale, you'll have a brief pause. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Pause. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Now for this next exercise, we're gonna to start to open up this lower glute area. And one of the trickiest things about a sway back is that oftentimes we have so much compression here in this lower part of the glute that we actually start to get these lower glute muscles working to bring the leg closer to midline, almost like they're an inner thigh muscle. So this next exercise is gonna look like it's meant to open up the inner thighs, which can also be tight in a sway back but it's really just to put the pelvis in a better position to begin to open up this lower glute region. To perform this activity, you'll start in a quarter turn prone position with your bottom leg straight, your elbows and forearms on the ground, and your top leg on a foam roller. You'll maintain a gentle breathing strategy throughout, using your leg to reach to open the top hip, and then return to the starting position. Reach using the leg, allowing the pelvis and spine to follow, and then return to the start. Reaching forward and then coming back. Feeling the sequence of the leg. for the floor-based exercises 
And now we're gonna talk a little bit about why this is not gonna be enough. And if you've been focusing mainly on floor-based exercises and not integrating the cues that we're gonna talk about here in a second and the exercises that we're gonna go through, this is the reason why you're not seeing results that you want. Now to understand how to get changes that stick, we need to realize that most of us are functioning in this upright kind of a position. And if we're going through our day in a sway back, some simple floor exercises are not gonna do the trick. So we wanna think about this. If most of our day is up against gravity, and this is our strategy when we're up against gravity, then why do we think that a couple of mobility drills are gonna magically all of a sudden make the body go, oh yeah, I could just stand in a neutral posture. That literally makes no sense. What we're doing on the floor is not specific enough. It's not gonna carry over because of that. And it's also not a magnitude great enough for us to get changes that are gonna stick. Let's face it, being in a sway back is the body's ability to balance in space. We need to give it a stimulus that has a magnitude great enough to give it something better to then substitute for that sway back. And what I mean by this is that we need to get up into a more neutral position, finding that position in a balanced way, and then we need to load it and make sure that we're resilient in that new position, and that's really how we get changes that stick. Anyone that's selling you some sort of a solution where you can just do floor-based activities or mobility-based activities are ignoring these principles of specificity and magnitude of stimulus relative to the goal. And the goal is to be able to stand in a balanced, neutral posture effortlessly for hours on end. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and work on finding this neutral position in standing and then progressing it with load. So if we're standing like this in a sway back, we said that the back is swaying back as a result of the pelvis coming forward. So we need to bring this pelvis back in space, but it's not as simple as bringing the whole pelvis back in space because we said we have that posterior tilt of the pelvis. So instead what we need to do is from this posteriorly tilted position, we need to learn how to unlock those lower glutes and almost stick the butt out. So starting off, you can do this standing kind of a hinge and you can also use your hands to kind of help you here. So you wanna push on something and you wanna to start to almost arch your low back a little bit, relax the lowest part of your abs to start and get these lower glutes to start to open up a little bit. Now, this is obviously very exaggerated. You can't go walking around like this, right? But you wanna just get that skill of opening up those lower glutes. So we're gonna relax back, either using a hand if we need to, or just doing it just by arching a little bit and coming back. But once we get the feeling of this, we're gonna bring it down to a more subtle level. And what we're gonna do from this sway back position, is just unlock those glutes, coming into a little bit more of an anterior kind of a tilt. And then we're gonna let this sternum that's ducked down like this, and we're just gonna let it come up. And so now we should already feel like we're in a little bit more of a neutral position. We have a normal arch in the low back. We have that rib cage coming up. The head's probably able to settle back a little bit more here over the rib cage. And now our center of gravity should be more centered right in the middle of the foot versus being either way in the front or actually swaying here into the back. So now that we have a little bit of awareness of what this neutral standing position is, we need to start to add load and be able to challenge our ability to maintain this position. So now this last exercise is a deadlift. And while it might seem like this is a pretty simple exercise, this is actually great for a number of reasons. And the two biggest reasons are that it opens up the lower glutes as well as those stiff six pack abdominals. And if we add the breathing in here, we can get those deeper side abdominals to come in and control that fluid shift within the abdominal cavity to help us alleviate that appearance of a pooch belly that's often coming with that sway back posture. So if we're starting here in the sway back, we wanna do a slight anterior pelvic tilt. We wanna allow the rib cage to come forward and up, head to come back, and then pressure in the midfoot. And then from here, we're gonna exhale and pull those lower abs in a little bit from the sides. And if that's confusing, go ahead and check out this video that I did on pooch belly. And once we have that, we're then going to go down into the bottom position here. We could do this on an inhale or an exhale. For the purposes of this demonstration, let's do that on an exhale. Exhale, shift back, go down. We're thinking about relaxing the lower glutes here, 
as well as maintaining an open chest so that that six pack is in an elongated position. Then we'll breathe in this position, feeling that nice lower rib cage expansion. Then we'll exhale as we come back up, pushing through the inner heel and pulling those guts up and in. Then we can do this a number of times, inhaling first, lower rib expansion, exhale back, opening lower glutes and front abs, inhaling in the new position, lower rib cage expansion, exhale, pushing through the inner part of the heel, pulling those guts in and coming back to the start. Now, once we've done that, we can't just go about our day and forget all about this because this is really just reinforcing and training a skill. What we really need to do is get our brain to be more comfortable in this more neutral type position. So after we do that deadlift, we wanna be mindful as to where is the pelvis now? Where is the rib cage now? Where is the head now? And can we go through our day with a little bit different balance between these segments with that nice neutral position? Ultimately, the level of ease of you maintaining this position is going to be directly proportional to the amount of progression that you do in this neutral type position. So the best way to do this is to take that exercise like a deadlift and week after week after week, once you've really nailed the form, is to progress the amount of weight you're doing on it so it becomes automatic. If you have a little bit more relaxation in the front of the rib cage, a little bit more open lower glutes, a little bit more active deep abs, and then you'll find that you're standing in a more neutral, confident, open position that looks way better without even having to think about it at all. So it's really your choice. You can do floor-based mobility exercises, hoping and praying that these are gonna fix everything, or you can get into an upright position, develop that positional competence, and then progressively overload it over time, and then just forget all about this and have perfect If that sounds good to you, go ahead, join that waitlist, and I hope to see you there. Until next time, thanks a lot for watching. Peace.